So let's imagine you've started pumping and it was a bit disappointing. You had a trickle of milk at the bottom of the bottle. You were hoping to fill the whole thing. It wasn't quite what you were hoping for. Now, when we're new mums, we can easily get very anxious about the amount we pump. It's very easy to worry that you haven't got enough milk or there's something fundamentally wrong with your milk supply. Let's remember one fundamental thing. This is not a baby. It doesn't remove milk in the same way a baby does. There are plenty of women with a really healthy milk supply who just can't quite trick their bodies into releasing the milk into the pump in the same way they might if a baby was breastfeeding successfully. If you really did just get a trickle at the bottom of the bottle or perhaps less than 10 milliliters, maybe you didn't get that milk ejection reflex or that letdown reflex. So do check that you're doing the massage, the warm compresses, perhaps having a go after a shower or a bath, thinking about visualization and meditation techniques, whatever you can do to trick your body into, into releasing the milk and releasing that oxytocin hormone. Remember that people pump for different reasons. So it might be that you're pumping to increase baby's weight gain perhaps and you might want to pump quite soon after baby's already breastfed and take out a small amount of very very high fat content milk what we used to call hind milk so if you pumped quite soon after a baby's finished feeding you you're not going to get 150 milliliters because your breast storage capacity has been diminished but you are going to get perhaps a small amount of really high fat content milk if you did that after every feed and then added those little tiny amounts together into one bottle that bottle would have a very very useful purpose when it comes to, to baby's weight gain that would be a nice big bottle of very very high fat content milk Although if we are going to give a bottle, don't forget we don't want to impact on our milk supply by having a good big block of time when our breasts aren't being used. Supply is protected by regularly draining milk and regularly draining our breasts. If you're not breastfeeding and you're only pumping, that's true for you as well. It's better to pump more frequently for shorter periods of time than it is for long blocks of time. So it's not a great plan to pump once every five hours for, for an hour and think that's the best way to preserve your milk supply. Most women don't need to pump for more than about 10, 15, 20 minutes maximum. So it will be better to do 10 minutes every two hours and perhaps have one block of sleep at night of four or five hours than it would be to pump for half an hour every four hours. Frequency of, sti of stimulation is what's going to help protect your milk supply. We don't want the breasts to be left full. If they're left full, then that's going to send signals to reduce milk supply. Don't run into the trick or fall into the trap rather of thinking that if I leave my breasts for a long time and I get more milk out, that's gonna be a better plan. It's not gonna increase your supply in the long term. It's actually better to have a softer breast from frequent stimulation and drainage. That's gonna increase your supply overall. Sometimes if we haven't pumped for ages and our breasts are really full and engorged, we might pump and get loads out and think, oh, that really worked well. Maybe our next time I'll leave it for, for five, six hours. That isn't going to be a good idea in the long term. You will reduce your milk supply. So if you are worried about milk supply, just remember that we're all different. It may be that you are somebody who has a smaller storage capacity. Maybe you do need to pump every 90 minutes to two hours for the first few weeks, whereas perhaps your friend next door with a larger storage capacity can, can manage every three, four hours. We're all a bit different. If you're really worried about your milk supply, then you can always contact a local breastfeeding counsellor or lactation consultant. There are some other things that they can do to help you. Or you can call the National Breastfeeding Helpline or contact Ardo. One thing to remember that Ardo can help you with is that sometimes pumps get a little bit tired over time. These little squidgy white bits that you'll find inside the pump that look a little bit like a wedge, they're made of a different plastic and occasionally after, it's still hard to say exactly how long after, but perhaps after a few weeks or months of use, this little bit here is gonna get looser. It's not gonna get such good suction. So you might need to replace that. This particular one had some spare ones in the box and I can just pop a new one on when I'm, when I'm ready to improve the output of my pump. And one of the nice things about Ardo pumps is that they're closed systems. That means milk isn't gonna get into the mechanism of the pump, which unfortunately is the case with a lot of very popular pump brands. So that means you could actually use it after a few months or even a couple of years. You could actually borrow a friend's pump and, and this because it's a closed system, that isn't gonna be a problem as long as you've got new pump parts and, and you're sterilizing carefully. So if you are gonna use it after a while, you're almost certainly gonna to need to, to change this little bit here and you might even want to think about getting new tubes as well so these little tubes this isn't where the milk goes by the way this is just going to be changing the pressure to allow the milk to come through the shells into the bottle but sometimes these can get a bit soft as well so if the section if the connection isn't as good 
on the way the tube is connected to the pump, that could also affect suction. So you might want to get some new tubes as well, a new collection kit for you. So the other thing to bear in mind is the way we hold the shell onto our breasts. If you're pressing really hard, it's a bit like stepping on the garden hose. You're gonna stop the flow of some of the milk ducts. Now we've got milk ducts quite close to the surface of our skin. So if you're pressing very hard, that's gonna impact on the flow of the milk. So, but equally, if you're very soft and gentle and it's hardly touching at all, and you haven't got a decent seal, that's also gonna cause problems. We need to get that good seal, so we're gonna allow the nipple to be drawn and we're gonna see that nipple movement inside the tunnel. Also watch out what you're doing below. You might not be able to see, but underneath, perhaps you've got a little gap there, perhaps if you're pushing in from the top. Get someone else to check underneath to make sure you've got that close contact all the way around and you're not pushing too hard. Okay, good luck with your pumping. Don't forget, if you are worried, there are people here to help you and um, hope things go well.